Example number two is much more difficult to see that it's an identical objects question. Okay? This is what makes this unit difficult. Of course, we're doing identical objects. We've done identical objects in example one. We're doing identical objects in example two. So it kind of, you get lulled into, oh, we're doing similar kinds of questions. On your exam, they're all mixed together. So how do we tell that Graham walks eight blocks home from the library, he walks four blocks east and four blocks south. So if we draw a picture of this as a grid, he walks east and south, so that means the library is here, the home is there. And how many different ways can he do that? At least four. <laughs> nice. So what we could do is we could just start drawing routes. Like this would be one example. And we're, we're assuming okay, that Graham is smart. He knows how to walk home. And he doesn't get trapped in one of these situations where he's like, oh my goodness, where am I? Right? <laughs> This does not count as a different route home. We're going to assume that Graham always knows he wants to walk closer to home. He's never going to go the wrong way. So if we count, this could be one route. This would be another route. Tell me when I do one that I've done already, OK? Are we OK so far? I did the same one twice. Oops, that one's can't do that. OK. So if we just try to count them, can you see that this could be very confusing? OK. Why is it identical? Well, when we're thinking about this, if I wanted to represent one of these routes, so if I took this route as an example, I could represent this route by saying this is east east, south, south, east, south, south, east. Right? SSA. Right? He probably, he probably should have done this. Um, no, let's see. What would be a good route to do? He probably should have done this. That would probably be the easy way to get home. Oh, that's bad, eh? Okay. So this is an identical objects question because the number of routes that he can get home are just different arrangements of going east and south. And so if you think of this as a Mississippi question, well, there'd be eight factorial if each of them were different, but we have four E's and four S's. I'm going to show you another technique that works for this. And it's counting it along as you go. So he's starting right here. And if we just consider all the different intersections, does it make sense that there's only one way he could get to that intersection? And there's only one way that he could get to that intersection. There's only one pathway. In fact, does it also make sense that there's only one pathway to get to that intersection? The only way he can get to that intersection is going straight south. And same thing here, and same thing here, and same thing here, here, and here. Those are only one way to get to those intersections. Because he can't backtrack, so there's no other path than going straight there. How many ways can he get to this intersection? Two. Can go this way. Or he could go this way. What about this one? Three. Can you see all three? He could go one, two, three. Similarly, this one will be three as well. It's just the same on the other side. 
what's going to happen in this one? 4, 6. So if there's three ways to get to this intersection, and three ways to get to this intersection, there'll be six ways that you can get to this one. And this one's going to be four. And this is equal to 70. So we could also count it that way. And there might be some situations where you actually like to count it that way. Maybe you get, maybe you get a different situation. So let's, let's look at this situation. Uh, Graham is still trying to walk home, um, but this is where Sally lives, and all of a sudden, all of Graham's routes on the way home happen to go past Sally's house. Ooh. So now, what does that mean? That means that he's no longer going to this section here. He's never going to those intersections there because he's always walking through Sally's house. How would we count that? Well, if we use the number system again, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, this will be 2, this will be 3, this will be 3, this will be 4, this will be 6. How many ways could he get to Sally's house? 10 ways. Now, he still needs to go home after walking past Sally's house. How many ways can he go to this one? Well, 1, but he's gone 10 already, so this would still be 10, because it's like 10 plus 0 and this one 10, and this one 10, 20, 30. So there would be 30 ways that he could walk home if he had to walk by Sally's house. How do you figure that algebraically? Well, algebraically, you could figure out how many, he's got, a, he's got his first decision is getting to Sally's house. His second decision is going home. Okay, library to Sally's house, Sally's house to home. Library to Sally's house includes going south twice, east three times. Okay, so if I had south twice, east three times, that would be 5 factorial divided by 2 factorial for the S's, 3 factorial for the e's. If you calculate that, you're going to get 10. Sally's house to home, he's got to go east one more time and south twice. Identical objects question, that'd be 3 factorial over 2 factorial, which would be 3. Decision 1, Sally's house, 10 choices. Decision two, going home, three choices, put them together, 10 times three, so that's like a you get 30. Question where you, have decisions decisions. you have decisions within decisions, meta decision question. Yes, and you will get those kind of questions. So that's how you could do that one algebraically. You could also do it just with. No. Question 12 is for practice. <laughs>